Hey there folks, so last we left off I had just gotten a um, backlight kit installed in this Game Boy Color, or I guess more, I installed this Game Boy Color in another housing and popped a backlight kit in there at the same time, uh, but I had also installed a uh, LED backlit button mod and going into it I knew there was going to be problems with it, or at least I assumed there was going to be problems with it, and until, you know, I, I was happy with, you know, just just the blinking lights because I figured, you know what, that's fine. I'm not actually going to play with it, who cares. Uh, but the problem is it never actually got the proper firmware on there, so every time the lights blink it also toggles the buttons. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that fixed because this thing is basically unplayable as is, what with um, not being able to use the select or B button anywhere. Uh, also, my power LED has stopped. I'm not sure if I knocked something loose while I was in there or if I need to fix that. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get a brand new um, one of these like funny playing button LED board thingers installed. Um, it should be pretty quick, especially since there is more or less one already installed. Oh, that's where my other batteries were. All right. Let's get this thing torn down. That looks like the right driver. I don't know if I'll publish the first video where I actually installed this kit originally, uh, but it's already on YouTube, um, probably won't make it public, but I'll probably throw a link to it in the description if you're curious. Can't imagine there's going to be uh, much value in having that video when I'm making this one right now, but it is what it is. Get that off there. I'm going to get the screws out just so I don't lose them later. <coughs> He's still soldered down. Something else might be going on. Oh well. I'm not worried about it. I've got plans for this thing. Uh, let's get that disconnected. Let's get that disconnected. Alright, so as you can see I've already got the, the clear uh, button board in here. Um, I went ahead and installed this one the first time around because I, I kind of wanted to use it as like a, a practice because I'd never soldered with a board like this and um, Funny Playing does specify that these require uh, very low temperatures to solder otherwise you will melt the substrate because uh, these aren't uh, polyimide like the normal flex boards are. Um, I'm not sure what specific material they are. They might just be PET, which makes sense that they'd melt at the temperatures that you're soldering at. Uh, they recommend below 200 degrees. I was able to get this in no problem soldering at about 300 degrees Celsius, but I was also in and out real quick. I don't expect to get as lucky desoldering this thing. Alright, but maybe, uh, maybe I was wrong again. That's not too bad. It is pretty delicate, and I can see that from the pads I did desolder. They're 
separating from the substrate, like that one. That one's separating, though not as bad. Uh, that one, they, they've all separated. Um, and I was very, very gentle with this thing. Uh, I could have gone in way harder with the heat, but I didn't, and I still managed to separate it. But I went into this specific mod knowing that it wasn't going to work. It had a little red X on there because it was a uh, defect. It had a short on the flash chip, and likely it was just never programmed properly, which is why it didn't work. I cleared that short. I don't know why I expected it to work after that, but anyway. Let's go ahead and get a new one in here. I am going to give all of the solder pads a quick once over with some fresh solder. And we have to do this normally to get this thing soldered down anyway. Because getting these things tinned while you're trying to get this thing soldered down, there's no way that works out well. Alright, let's get a tape down. So I am going to go ahead and get this lined up with as many of the vias as possible, or realistically all of them. I'm just going to put a bit of tape on there, hold it down. just to keep it aligned and then I'm going to start at the bottom and then work my way up. get in there in and out real quick but I'm not having a good time not with this tip this was a poor decision okay <sighs> this should be good I'll use I believe this is the pine sole. just because this has a little bit more friendly a tip for the type of soldering that I want to do. Wait for it to heat up here. I think it's set to about 280, maybe 300. Yeah, it's a little hot, but we'll make it work. That didn't work out at all. So that pad is totally gone. Might be able to do all these like hit and run style. <laughs> I just did those three, but geez. This was definitely a much easier tip to use though. It's the little cup tip for um, drag soldering. I forget what they're called. Uh, luckily I started with the pad that does not matter. So the fact that I totally ruined that pad is going to be irrelevant for this install. But. Feels like I got the rest. 
quick in and out with some solder, move on. Uh, this is the pad I totally ruined down here. You can see the uh, substrate just totally melted away. But I think it'll be good enough. I'll just get that solder out of there. And uh, reassemble, I guess. This horrifying bodge job appears to have failed because that component is lifted off the board, which means it's not something I'm going to fix right now, but I'll have to fix it eventually. Probably end up cutting this thing up for Poco or something. It's reassembled. And let's try it out. Alright, and because we're doing plastic into plastic, we don't need to crank these screws down as tight as they'll go. Uh, my preferred method is to just bottom them out and then back up like an eighth of a turn. I think that was closer to a quarter turn, but same difference really. This will help preserve our threads and ensure that nothing's over tightened to the point where it's going to crack just by handling it funny. I have yet to crack a screw post or anything like that doing this, so... Maybe it's confirmation bias, but at the very least, it seems to work. Same batteries, same test cart. Notice lights aren't blinking, and hey, look at that! Now it's not randomly hitting buttons. Oop. I blame this junk repro cart. Took me about six tries just to get it to read reliably, and I guess it's not reading that reliably, is it? But hey, all my buttons seem to be working, so I think we're good to go. Let me go ahead and kill these lights so we can see this thing a little bit better. And then I suppose let's go ahead and go over the backlight modes. Something that I uh, neglected to cover the last few times, uh, but there is one extra solder pad up here. Um, right near one of the um, cart headers that you're supposed to solder to for power. This C pad here, if you have that wired up properly, you have it wired up to your power switch so that this thing can detect the battery voltage that your Game Boy is using. Uh, that results in a low power warning uh, where the lights will blink, uh, but that only works if you have an internal lithium ion mod, like for example, Funny Playing's bat, uh, rechargeable battery kit. Uh, if you're using double A's like I am, uh, either nickel metal hydride or even like the Jugi rechargeables, then it's all it's always gonna it's constantly gonna be warning you that your battery is about to die because it's it's uh, set for lithium voltages which are just a little bit higher. Um, so if your lithium battery were at the level that 
it's detecting you know that your alkaline batteries are at that's bad <laughs> uh, so I don't recommend doing that if you're not using the lithium battery but it's just I believe select A and B to toggle out of that and disable it uh, but since we're not in that I don't have that mode uh, let me sorry totally forgot to kill the lights there so as I hold A and B you can see it cycles through the modes so our first mode is going to be off that is not the default but it is what it is uh, let's see yeah it's select A and B to disable the battery warning and then it's just A and B for normal controls um, and then when it's off off there are no controls you could just use the Game Boy normally um, hold A and B you can turn it back on and then select and A should let you cycle through colors is it not doing that I might have the modes confused I think this is just the static mode this might be the battery detect mode or something like that where if you don't actually have the battery detect hooked up, it doesn't really do much aside from display this purple color. So let's move on to the next mode. See the lights flashed for a half second there, and now they're they're pulsing in and out and changing color. I don't believe we have any controls for this either. If I do select A and B, well, select just select an A for now just select and B I'm not getting a whole lot so let's cycle to the last mode and this one we can set the color or we're supposed to be able to unless they changed the control scheme once again does it start I've been doing this wrong you gotta wire both up ah start is brightness it seems Obviously, we'll set that to the max. B for down, A for up. And then select. Does not appear to be doing anything. And that turns it off. So then this first mode should be letting us change the color. Oh, and it was. I just wasn't patient enough. I'm sorry, guys. It's slow because it steps through, it's probably stepping through the RGB values. I think you can hold it and it goes quicker. I'm sorry, I had the modes mixed up. I believe this is the mode it defaults to. And we hold A and B and now we've got the fade in and the pulsing in and out RGB can't really change colors with that it seems that just changes on its own and then this is the static one that's why it's white okay so first mode I believe the default mode is RGB you can pick your color select B, select A will let you cycle through the colors. Start B, start A will let you increase and decrease the brightness. Hold A and B again. We have get the pulse mode. There aren't any controls for that except I think you can do max brightness. No, it still cycles no matter what you're doing. Yeah, no controls for that. You just let it do its own thing. And then the third mode is white backlight mode, uh, which you can increase and decrease the brightness on. But that's about it. You can't change the color. It's set to white, which personally I don't have a problem with. But And then you hold it again, turn it off, and then you're back to the first mode if you cycle again. And then this mode you can set to any color you want. It just takes a while to get there because it cycles through the RGB values pretty much individually. Uh, select A to increment, select B to decrement, start B to decrease brightness, start A to increase brightness.
Don't worry, one day we'll get to the blues. See, not, not the quickest, but you know, it do work. Oh, and it should be storing this stuff past reboots. The only difference is, like I said, if you have that low battery warning or that, that C pad hooked up, this guy right up at the top right, um, it's going to enable the battery warning mode every single boot. So if you have that hooked up for the lithium battery mod, battery level detection, and you're not using it with lithium batteries, every single time you turn it on, you're gonna have to hit select A and B to disable the battery warning. But other than that, it seems to work. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. I don't, I don't necessarily see the value in, in putting it on this clear substrate. Like, it's cool, don't get me wrong. I, I love that they're doing stuff like this. This is, this is a really cool technology, but I just don't see the value with this mod. Uh, especially since the temperature that it supports is so freaking low. Um, like you almost have to, y you have to get specialty solder just to solder this thing down, or you have to trust that you're good enough to be quick in and out. I trust myself that I'm good enough to be quick in and out, and I still ruined most of the pads ru uh, removing this one and totally removed one of the pads on the one that I just installed. Thankfully, that was one of the only optional pads that's not actually connected to anything, so it didn't work out too bad. Uh, but also, I don't have this in a clear shell, so it's not like you can even see the thing on the board. It's neat, but in my particular case, it provides no utility. Um, the other version, the one that, the version of this thing that is made on the normal flex substrate material, the polyimide stuff, that is more heat resistant, a little bit more... Uh, tolerant of the temperatures that we would normally solder at, that thing's uh, either the same price or cheaper. Um, the clear one is currently listed for 35 and then the white one is currently listed at 30 So unless you have a specific, specific use case, like a clear shell where you really want to show this off, just get the regular one. Um, there's, there's not not any functional benefit to the clear one. It just looks cooler, but it's harder to install. So I don't recommend it, especially if you're not practiced. Um, I'm going to mention this. I tend to make soldering look pretty easy in my videos, but that's because I've been doing it for almost two decades. I have a lot of experience under my belt. So when I say this is not the easiest thing to solder, if, especially if you're not, you know, not comfortable, you don't have a lot of experience with soldering, I genuinely mean that it is not the easiest thing to solder, and I do not recommend it whatsoever. Uh, I, o I consider this only viable for uh, people who are really comfortable with soldering, and you know who you are. Um, if you're sitting there thinking, oh, well, does, does that mean me? Is he talking about me? It probably means I'm not talking about you, and I mean no offense. We all start somewhere, you'll get there eventually, but just don't waste the 35 bucks and, and melt the thing, you know? It, it's, it helps neither you nor the, the vendor. If you wanna get solder practice in, there are much cheaper ways to do it. Uh, but anyway, that's all I've got. Uh, shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop and Funny Playing for sending this stuff my way to check out. Uh, I will go ahead and shoot a link in the description to Retro Game Repair Shop if you wanna check this thing out. Uh, it's pretty neat, but again, there's a warning on there that you have to use low temperature solder and they are not messing around. You will totally melt the thing and lift pads if you ignore that. And if you're lucky, it'll still work. Anyway, thanks for watching. Get you all next time.